fact, yesterday RNZ told the story of a man who's been living with his family in a South Auckland boarding house for seven years. Raymond Tanaki, his wife and two sons live in one room at Favona Lodge in Mangari because they can't afford market rents and gave up waiting for a state house. Now, after the story aired, the government rang Mr Tanaki to try and put him back on the social housing register. This is Eva Corlett's story. She updates it. Raymond Tainaki says he thought it was a joke when the ministry phoned to put him back on the social housing register. They say they want to reinstate me and my family onto the waiting list. Uh, they asked me why did I get off and I said well I lost trust in them, you know, they weren't doing anything, we were on the, on the list for a very, very long time. Mr Tainaki, who cannot work due to sickness, had removed his family from the social housing register after waiting five years for a house. When our first son was born, he was born premature. So we had all the letters from the specialists in Middlemore Hospital and when we told them their story, they said, OK, you guys are going on top of the list. And we waited and waited, nothing happened. And then our next son was born, same situation. So we ended up uh, in private rent, moving out here, and then they sold the house and we move again. So we got frustrated and we ended up, that's how we ended up here. Mr Tainaki, his wife and sons, aged 13 and 11, live in one room at the lodge and share facilities with the other tenants. During the phone call, he said the ministry advised him to check private rentals and their prices. But with the family living off his wife's income as a carer, he says paying market rent is out of the question. For example, for $450 rent, it's going to cost us $900 a fortnight. My wife gets paid fortnightly. $999 a fortnight she gets. What are we going to do with the other 99 we got to pay the power, we got to pay the water rate, we got to pay the gas or whatever it is. And our children, one of our boys is going to De La Salle next year. And our daughter is in Macaulay. Oh, how are we going to pay all that? He wants the government to understand the problems families like his face. We don't have that freedom, everybody in one room. This is not right. I mean, it's just like putting a car in a garage or two cars in a garage and that's it. But we are human. We all have a soul. We want to be happy. Mr Tainaki will have a phone meeting with the ministry early next week. An emergency housing provider says homelessness has peaked over the last 18 months with desperate, vulnerable people waiting longer and longer for a house. Bernie Smith of Monte Cecilia Trust says many give up. English being a second language, there's stigmatisation of people that are living in poverty or low socioeconomic. Then there's the whole issue of going into a WINS office and waiting hours and hours in reception to get an appointment. So there's a lot of frustration from people who have genuine need that give up. He says it's frustrating that the ministry seems to only get in touch with families after media exposure. Suddenly the bureaucrats come out of the woodwork and want to shut it down pretty quick and there's all sorts of offers that were never available before. While it's a huge advantage to this family, what about everyone else in the same situation? Do they have to get a headline in the newspaper as well? The Ministry of Social Development says everyone going through a housing assessment must check if there's an affordable private rental option first. It says depending on the circumstances, the housing package could include a house or an accommodation supplement. I tamaki makaura mo te hotako o te ahiahi. Ko Eva Corlett, tēnei.